This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to today's edition of The Pit Stop, the Monday edition of The Pit Stop for you, the pit crew. You guys are the real stars of the show, as you know, because we are just here to talk about sim racing. Without your input, your feedback, your comments and questions, it wouldn't be the same show. So you are the real star of today's show. What is going on in the world of sim racing on this beautiful Monday morning? Uh, I say beautiful. Usually I'm pretty pumped up. I'm always so pumped up. Uh, this Monday, my brother actually just had a 10-day vacation. So today started off with uh, the energy of the epitome of Mondays, a Monday following vacation. Although me, as soon as my brother left the house, to be honest with you, I got in the sim racing news and I got right back into my groove. So happy Monday to everybody. I hope uh, things are lining up for a good week for everybody out there. Um, it's it's a little bit of a slow news day. So before we even get to the news, let's why? Why would it be slow? Here we are, uh, you know, the 21st of October coming up on Thanksgiving. And so, yeah, the news was a little light today. And, and I, you could even say it for the last couple of weeks, it's been a little lighter than normal, especially if you removed eSport from the equation. And so I, I'm just wondering, are, is this anticipation of a holiday season, is something going on? Are things slowed down because a lot of things that we aren't expecting are going to happen maybe in the next 30 to 60 days, allowing people to spend their hard-earned money on new things for Christmas time? Uh, I, I'm crossing my fingers that's the case. I mean, there's certainly no guarantee. I don't know if companies are quite that sophisticated to be planning, at least not sim racing companies. I think you get into the Fortune 500. They know how to sell. Um um, <laughs> Devin, if it's the 21st, you have things to do. I understand. I feel the same exact way. So, um, yeah, I just kind of wonder. Anyway, good morning, Brian. How you doing? Flight is. How you doing? Devin's in the house. Tim, of course, you are here. How you all doing? Steven Dager. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Um, so what is going on? Uh, a lot of people uh, have commented on the car, uh, the Porsche. Look at that Porsche. Gotta love the paint scheme, don't you? It's uh, What does that remind me of, that orange and blue Porsche paint scheme? And Wow, do I have to shave or what? I am sloppy, sloppy on Monday the 21st. So let's go ahead and bring down our thumbnail and get into the news, talk about what's going on. First thing being that 911. So the Porsche 911 GT3 R lacked competitiveness for a while. Modern GT3 cars make good use of the rear diffusers, but that's where the engine sits in a 911. The 19 Porsche 991 II GT3 evolved. The engine moved forward, making room for more efficient diffuser. So uh, do you guys remember when this went on with Porsche, where the, the, to an extent, the 911 was kind of actually in the racing form, turned into almost like, what, a Cayman? Uh, isn't that the car that they just don't want to be better than the Porsche 911? But the only way they can make the 911 shape or or plan, uh, geometry work was to actually turn it into almost a Cayman. And what do you know? What a beautiful result that would be. Uh, anyway, but that is the car that is now coming into a set of Corsa. So, so we talked about, we, well, we looked at the Audi, the Aston Martin, all coming in a, in a soon-to-be-released update that's going to be all free content. That's for a set of Corsa Competizione. So this is this is great news. So uh, coming also to ACC, and we've talked about, it, but we have some new screenshots. Zandvoort Circuit also going to be free. So this isn't paid DLC. This is an update coming to the game with a variety of cars and Zandvoort, and I'm assuming some other updates to the sim as as well. Um, and in addition to that, also we have the new Lamborghini Huracan GT3. Um, so two, uh, we've seen four of the cars coming to ACC, where they're calling it ACC V1.1 free. So if you own it, you will get this update, including that content. So that is very cool. Uh, yes, Sim Racing Source, thank you. Be sure to click the likey button. Give us the thumbs uppy, um, all those good uppies. So thank you very much for that. Tell a friend. That would be great. Post our show on Facebook or Twitter, wherever you talk to people. Uh, help spread the word. That always helps. Goes a long way. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, me too, Brad. I'm, I'm literally, the minute that comes out, I'm going to be all over ACC again, for sure. And it's been a little while. I did drive some ACC when I was doing some wheel testing, uh, but I haven't gotten back to it purely for fun, let's say. Uh, so that will affect my timing and it'll be a great excuse to get back out there and try out Zanvort, which is a great track. So new cars, great new track automatic that we're going to go try it out the day it comes out so we'll keep our, our eyes on it you know doing the show three days a week we should get an idea right now we just know it's coming soon we don't have an exact date 
Um, okay, Jesse Fox Bucho can help you. Bucho can help you or Sean at ProSim. Okay, I'm sorry. I missed... Oh, for sim racing systems. Yes. If you have problems or need help with that, definitely talk to She's Sean Seabrand, Pro Sim Racing on YouTube. He is the, the guy running the Sim Pit Pro Sim Racing uh, Assetto Corsa SRS series. That's a lot of words to get out of your mouth, by the way. Um, in Is VR any good yet in ACC, asked Dave Blair. Uh, no, but it wasn't... Wasn't there something about there being a VR uh, uh, element to this update? Don't I remember seeing, didn't we talk about a post for triple screen, better triple screen support? Oh, that was triple screen support, not VR. I'm sorry. Um, the only fix for VR, I remember on a set of course, a competency, and I try to rack my brain, and I could be wrong here, so someone correct me if I am. Uh, didn't you need to, like, turn it off of Steam VR or... It was some way you logged in to make it work, got better results. I think that was the only um, trick, and it wasn't a fix of any kind. All right, uh, just uh, reminding you, again, we're a little short on nose, but just for a reminder, the Logitech G Challenge Grand Finals are heading to Las Vegas. Tune in live on November 16th. Wow. Yeah, okay, November. I'm like, tell me I'm not five days late on this. Uh, I'm like, haven't we been talking about it? So, but anyway, coming up November 16th, it'll be live, and this is going to be the Logitech G Challenge, where one of uh, the the winner here is going to become one of the finalists in the whole McLaren Shadow project. So, one of those uh, different entry points in via the Logitech G Challenge entry. So, we'll be able to tune in and watch that and find out who goes to the finals. That's going to be a big deal. As we know, this is the year that the winner of McLaren Shadow is going to get to drive in a, a Aston Martin for a season. I mean, it's insane. What a pro. You know, it's one thing to get a race, a drive, an experience in a car with a team. But when you're giving somebody a season to race, in one season, if you've got the stuff, in one season, in a reasonable series like this one is, you would make a big enough name for yourself to secure a ride, I would think. Uh, you know, one thing racing always appreciates is the guys who overachieve, uh, exceed expectations, do more with the car they're given, do more with the talent they're perceived as having, and place higher. It's not even winning races. It's just making people go, whoa, we did not expect that from that guy in that car and you've got yourself a ride. So let's let's hope that the McLaren Shadow winner goes on to a great, great real-life racing career. Wouldn't it be another one of those great stories? We have so many of them now. Wouldn't it be just another one of those great stories of sim racer turned pro turned real-life racer, you know? So, um... Yeah, if they fix Hobucho, let's hope. Let's hope that that uh, the one point one version, maybe some VR things will be addressed. I don't recall hearing anything about it, but I know that there's demand. I know that they need to, you know, get with the times to an extent. And hopefully enough people have chimed in and they're addressing such a thing. Uh, Abby Eaton got a seat in the W series. Okay, cool for overachieving. Um. Dave Blair, when he finishes a race, he is overachieved. And thereby, people should take notice and give you sponsorship, buddy. Uh, Logitech G Challenge, another entry point. All right, what else? Dirt Rally 2.0 World Series continues with round two. Uh, we've showed that blog numerous times with various locations, car classes, and leaderboards. Just kind of want to give you guys a reminder that that's something you could be pursuing or watching. You'll find that at Dirt Rally 2.0. Twitter page or via Codemasters. Also, uh, da, 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 this. Oh, so they are just showing off. So this is Formula One. Happy Friday. So I've had a little bit of a misunderstanding at times over what the Challenger Series really was in the Formula One competition. Um, and and I, I, it turns out that I was actually pretty close to being right on what it is. But in this post here, there's a link. Want to find out more about the Challenger Series. So we know the Pro Series. We talk about it. We watch the timer and the countdown for the Pro Series, right? But we also 
follow the Challenger series. And, you know, they use some of those more gamer tag type situations. Anyway, so the Challenger series is that online competitions. Here's a list of dates of the competitions going on. And the top seven players in each of the Challenger series competitions from each platform, each platform, will qualify for the 2020 Pro Draft, with one being crowned the inaugural F1 Series champion. Now, let's talk about that. We know that the competition for Codemasters F1 2019 is being done on the PC version. Now, when we talk about cross-platform titles, we're often thinking or questioning are they equal xbox to ps4 to the pc are there versions variations or differences in the games um and here we have a competition where you're going to have seven eligible drivers from the playstation seven from the xbox and seven from the pc are all of those drivers of equal value in the draft so is the number one guy is it going to go number one, number one, number one as far as draft order? Number two, number two, number two in draft order? Or are we going to see one platform or another get pulled two, three, four drivers deep before we see another uh, uh, grouping get called? That'll be an interesting thing to watch when the draft does happen. So the Challenger Series is the official qualifier for the draft. That does not earn you a spot in the 2020 Pro esports series it gets you a spot in the draft and we don't know definitively maybe we'll have to do some research we don't know how many drivers are kept so right now the format is three drivers per team 30 sim racers out there is it 30 or 30 is it 10 teams or 12 um but how many drivers are they going to keep How many are they going to drop? How many are they going to draft? So when you think about the draft, just like the NFL draft, I think there are points in time where maybe you're on a year where a lot of guys didn't retire. Uh, Maybe you're on a year where a lot of teams have very full rosters that they're very, very uh, uh, comfortable with. And what they need to draft is light. So, so I think you have draft years in most sports that are more significant than other draft years. Uh, sometimes it's the need of the league. Sometimes the level of players available in the draft. But you know, you you might see a point where the draft is is either mandated how many drivers you have to rotate, or maybe there's a little little less action than we think. Uh, going on so anyway these are the things i will wonder about when i see and hear these stories but again top seven drivers from each platform are going to be available for the 2020 draft uh i've challenged you guys and none of you have sent me a leaderboard so i'm very 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 disappointed in you all very you should all be ashamed of yourselves for not fulfilling my need to have this uh i'm kidding i'm just messing with you guys uh this is the leaderboard for grid so grid being the new hot item in sim racing where people can have fun. I think it's fair to say grid is one of those uh, games that may be kind of a game leveler. Um, I'm not expecting Bono Hui to come in and kick our butt so easily, so to speak. So come on, come on, guys. Let's see some leaderboard shots in the new grid game. There will there are leaderboard challenges. That way I can tell our us, all of you out there, who, which one of you got where on the board, and if all of a sudden you're like, hey, Dave Blair is 27th on the board, I would like to beat Dave Blair, thank you for be- volunteering for that uh, sacrificial lamb position, Dave Blair, uh, but yeah, I- I'm going to get out there and do it, so please send me some screenshots, Sean, S-H-A-U-N at simpit.com, and we will make you the star of the next show, so what else, what else? Gran Turismo, five days to go until the countdown to Tokyo. Or wait, five days in the countdown. The countdown has begun. The event will be in five days at Tokyo. This is the next big hitter, the best of the best in the PS4 world of Gran Turismo Sport going on at Tokyo. They also released a cool little trailer. October 26th through 27th are the dates. And this is the officially, you know, think about it, officially sanctioned by FIA. So another one of our eSports series officially being sanctioned by the ultimate sanctioning body in real life motorsports um no i think it's specific challenges edgar where they they um i think it's like the it'll probably be under multiplayer 
I have I don't own the game yet, but it'll probably be in multiplayer. And someone correct me if I'm wrong. And uh, and then you'll probably have uh, like a weekly challenge or something like that. Something like that that it'll be called is my guess. At least that's the format that I see in a lot of uh, other ones. So all right. Uh, what else? What else? Rick Motek. Oh, if you want to hang out with Rick Motek, I'm always telling you guys about Hot Lap Pump Day. If you're down in, in Miami, you could always go by their offices and hang out. But apparently they're going to be working with Farrah Racing at Homestead, Miami. Uh, they're going to have a next-level racing motion platform with Thrustmaster and Rick Motek equipment all there at the Speedway. And you can find out the details through their Instagram or their Twitter page uh, for the the – let's see here – they're also working with Alpine Stars. So, ooh, you're going to be able to have a sale on gloves. Pick up some uh, Alpine Star gloves while you're there as well. Anyway, if you want to meet Frank and the guys from Rick Motech and try out some cool equipment and you're planning on going to that race in Homestead, you can. Uh, we already let the cat out of the bag on this one, but 16 days, 1 hour, 47 minutes, 40 seconds now until the Pro Series Live Show 4 gets underway. This being the Pro 19, uh, 19, <laughs> 2019, <laughs> the 1984 Pro Series, <laughs> the 2019 Pro eSport F1 Series, and uh, $500,000 is the prize pool for this year's season. And isn't, uh, someone correct me if I'm wrong on this one, but I believe Live Show 4, isn't this the final? Isn't this like the day they do like four races, and I think it might be the final? Um, do we have a calendar? Results. Let's look at the results real quick. Why not? And it looks like right now, David Toniza is leading with 104 points over Frederick Rasmussen with 92. Yarno Opmir is in third with 59. Look at the gap. So you, you kind of get it down. Uh, for the most part, to a two-man, uh, pending some massive changes, uh, unless Tunisia or Rasmussen does something hard. It's kind of coming down to those two guys, it looks like. 59 points back to third. Marcel Kiefer in fourth with 56. And two-time season champion Brendan Lay all the way back to fifth place with 48 points. Rough season with so much money on the line this year. That's too bad. Uh, looking for some other names. Bono Hui in eighth position. And... Yeah, anyway, that's all heating up. So, And there are, are uh, Constructor Championship points as well. So let's see. Round one already happened. Round two, round three. That was event one. Round four, five, and six. That was round two. Seven, eight, nine was... Oh, no results on nine. None on eight. So they've gone three races... Three races. One. No, I'm miscounting something. Anyway, we don't have results for round nine, eight, nine, ten, eleven, or twelve. Wow. Is that a mistake? So have they not been wanting to announce the tracks and then all of a sudden, whoopsie, round 11, we're racing Coda for 14 laps. Uh, anyway, uh, good stuff going on there. And again, the countdown what are we 16 days did i already be, where where are we 16 days one hour 40 minutes and five seconds i'm not waiting five seconds to time the zero uh steam talking about the dirt road back book october 18th 2019 two new cars and a few standout community members it's time for the dirt road book and you'll find that we've already looked at this haven't we i think that we've looked at that dirt road book six times on the show uh, slow news day, so I'll just show you some cool stuff that you can go find and check out. If you want to, Real Dirt Episode 3, or, and uh, a video here. This is actually on Facebook, so this is Dirt Co. Media House, and this is a uh, episode of Real Dirt presented by Wicked Energy Gum as Adam Elbert turns winning an iRacing Championship Series Online into a shot to drive a real open-wheel midget car. So there's a cool story there that you can check out. And see his thing and hear all about his stuff. Again, that's at Dirt Co. Media House on Facebook. Other cool stuff for you to check out since it's slow news day is Drift 19 video game by ECC Games. 
And this is Powell Gross, Drift Patriot, telling you his, showing you his ventures into the game. And you'll find that on YouTube under Powell. That's P A W E L Gross, G R O S Z, aka Drift Patriot on YouTube. Checking out Drift 19. Um, actually, this is supposed to be later in the news. Let's move that where it belongs. Nope. There we are. Okay, we fixed that. Uh, good time to check in with you guys. Also, cool stuff. I'll just let this play for a moment. This is the eSport WTCR Oscaro 2019 Round 7 at Pang. This is in Race Room. This is where our buddy Jack Keatley racks up wins on a regular basis. Turns out he didn't have the best weekend for him. Still a pretty good weekend, a weekend that most people would be proud of, but maybe a, a not the best day for uh, Jack. Jack, But anyway, uh, you can watch. This is the race that went on yesterday, round seven at Ping, a double header, so race one underway here. Again, just if you need something on your phone to entertain you while you're at work or just trying to make the day go by, this could be worth the watch as well, the full coverage of the event. Uh, really good broadcast. I was watching some of this a little bit before the show and found it to be quite entertaining. Um, ah, a new season is getting ready to start in Project Cars 2 on Sim Racing Systems. Dave Blair, thank you for telling us about that. Um, when did you pay, post it, Tim? If, if, if it was posted after the show went live, then no, I totally missed it. I, I can't really tune in to Discord in this configuration um, and be able to bring it in. So, um, All right. Yep, so you have a new series there uh, on Race Room. Just so you guys know, check that out. All right. Oh, yeah, Jack's in the race right now in this video. Jack is currently running in... Uh, ba, 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 where is Jack? I saw him earlier. He made a big comeback, didn't he? Oh, that's race two. He's in second place right there. That's him in second place in the blue, blue white, and red car. That'd be Jack. Okay, what else? Go So you can check that out. Go check out FIA WTCR Oscaro on YouTube, and you'll see Round 7 at C-Ping. C-Ping. A uh, cheap gamer. Talk about tabletop racing premium for the Android. Again, if you need something, free games are cool, especially on the Android. I have my Android right here. Uh, I have my iPhone over there, but here's the Android one. Uh, so I might check out tabletop racing for free, just to have something to kill time on. Uh, you know, you ever find yourself in a doctor's office or, you know, I don't know, a train station, depending on where you are, or waiting for an appointment? Well, if it's a job interview, I suggest not playing games in the lobby. But if it's something unimportant or that you don't care what they think of you, I'm always playing, uh, well, you guys know, I'm playing Candy Crush when I'm at the doctor's office waiting for a visit. I don't care. I'm playing Candy Crush. It kills time a lot better than uh, Homes and Garden magazine from 1979 still on the table. So anyway, check out Tabletop Racing, now free uh, for the Android. Check this out. This is just made the DeLorean. Check it out. The DeLorean makes its way into Grip, the combat racing game we've talked about. Probably not one that a lot of you guys are playing, but you got to talk about Back to the Future. It's the DMC DeLorean 2650 for grip combat racing and that's kind of cool let's play the video and check it out just a little bit waiting for ointment <laughs> did i say appointment i think I, i'm pretty sure oh, gosh i hope i didn't say waiting for ointment but you got me to say it now <laughs> there you go back to the future delorean dmc oh too funny oh look at that it even flies that is awesome boy does this game look like f-zero that looks like F zero with it. You know, you know, I might have to try this game. <laughs> I have to admit, that looks fun. I I just might have to grab that for one of the the consoles or something for the brother's Xbox and see if it looks cool. All right, what else? Sorry, I got all distracted with uh, uh, cool things. Feature burnout needs to bring arcade racers back with a bang. 
So, you know, we just had Grid come out, and Grid is definitely kind of on the racy side, right? I mean, it, you want to kind of act and feel like it's Wreckfest, but, you know, it's just a little more racy than that, I feel. I haven't played it yet, but just in what I've seen and talking to Billy and talking to others, it sure seems like it's just a little bit. But this picture, this picture shows you what the intention and what it's all about so yeah uh the new version of burnout to bring back this kind of racing um yes i agree i agree i'm down with that completely need for speed heat removes garages car classes for more robust customization uh, I didn't read the article, <laughs> just to be honest with you. I really didn't. Um, so you can check it out if you're interested and you're intending on knowing every single nuance of Need for Speed Heat. You can check this out at only single player and forgive me for ah, not being that big a deal. Is Wreckfest fit, Sean? Um, oh, Steven, it's so hard to answer that question. I know some people who love the way it drives now because they turned it into truly an arcade racer, an arcade rec, rec exactly what the name is. And and I dare wonder, um, thinking back on their intentions when they were building Wreckfest, Wreckfest always felt like it had the intention of being more of a arcade game than what it became. And then somehow they built something wonderful, in my opinion. I've always loved the way Wreckfest drove. Um, and then they just went back to this super gamey. Like, I bet it plays better on a on a controller than it ever played on a controller with the way they've done it. Um, so, no. I mean, but it's not broken per se. Oh, did they change it back to the... We have plenty of guys who play Wreckfest. If Bucho or Jesse or it's been a while for me, Cam, Doug, any of you guys in here, did they go back to the original physics? Yeah, I don't think... See, Hemi, uh, of course, because it's a drifting monster game. So, Okay, what else? Uh, and remember I told... Is this build up? For the holidays, when we're talking grip, when we're talking, um, uh, why do I keep spacing on burnout? Uh, when we're talking about Need for Speed, when we're talking about Monster Energy Supercross, the official video game three announced, releasing February 4th. So obviously that's going to be late for the season. What do you want to bet? They're going to have like early uh, purchases available around that time one way or another. Um so, okay, what else? GT Planet, talking about GT Sport Daily Races, French Flair at Goodwood and Racing Antipodes. Do I have to use a disclaimer for a weird word? I'm antipode. What is, what is antipodes? Someone help me. What is antipodes? Anyway, uh, there are the events going on. Race A will be Goodwood Motorsport Circuit in the Renault Sport Clio. Race B will be Suzuka Circuit in this GR3 Garage Car. And Auto Tromo de Interlagos, I love Interlagos, in the GR4 garage car will be race C. So there you go. There's your entertainment for GT Sport coming up. Uh, we already talked about Zanvor. Uh, race Department is talking about it as well. So, yeah, Race Department. Uh, and they have some screenshots. So if you want to see some screenshots, they've pulled some of them together. These might be the same ones we are. Yeah, these are the same ones we already looked at ourselves. So there you go. Race department talking about it as well. All right, little eye candy. We're getting into eye candy time of day. Uh, means we're getting nearer the end of the show for Monday the 21st. Sim Racing Hardware News and Reviews blog showing off the new Sparco P310. Gotta love the 310. If, what's your guys' favorite wheel shape? Um, like, and and... Like, if you're a Formula One guy, do you have to use a little butterfly rim, a formula wheel? Uh, if you're a NASCAR guy, do you need to have a big giant round wheel? Um, are you a, I race a little of everything, so I like, like, I have to be honest, I have two favorite wheels when it comes to the world. The 310 shape I really, really love, but they're, every once in a while the flat bottom, flat top isn't optimal, but it works. And then I come back to... My one size fits all might be. I've been given this thought because this is what I'm going to put on my rig. 
I think it's an 11 inch, like a, a 190 millimeter uh, round, perfectly round 190. Maybe some good ergo in the main, you know, 10 and three positions or nine and three positions. Mr. Thawman donate, Mr. Thawman, you donate every day. You, oh, I, that is so appreciated. It goes, when I say every day, Mr. Thawman, this story here, right here, this eye candy that we're looking at right now is because of Mr. Thawman. So I can't thank you enough, buddy. Uh, but this is the spirit of V8 supercars in F1 Sims games. Uh, wait, what, what? I'm sorry, I, the, the read was a little... Yeah, we're off the air. I have... Is that my internet, or is that... Bear with me, everybody. If we're back on the line, I'll be shocked. I have internet. It's not that. I've been having internet issues. I got disconnected from the race on Friday night. Um, I, th that was really weird. It's a message I've never gotten that told me OBS disconnected. And then a moment later it said OBS reconnected. Anyway, uh, that's a nice looking wheel. Uh, do we have a price on this sucker? We don't even have a price, do we? What kind of article doesn't give you the price? Huh? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. If you have to ask, it's too expensive. How about that? So they're doing it in an LCD version as well as a uh, non-LCD version. Uh, what else? What else? Okay, new content. This is the Assetto course of the P13C prototype by IER Modding is now available, IE being International Endurance Racing. We've seen a good selection of mods. This is the latest available for Assetto Corsa. Uh, so again, if you're just looking for another car, are they doing any modded stuff at S? Are, yeah, they do modded stuff at SRS. What am I thinking? Of course they do. They have their whole downloads page. <clears throat> All right, what else? Oh, just rigs. All right. Basics, people. You do not have to have thousands of dollars invested in your sim racing setup. Uh, if this guy's chair doesn't move, if this guy's pedals don't move, Man, is that not all you need? He's running a Windows Mixed Reality VR setup. Single monitor, I'm assuming, for working his computer on a normal basis. A simple Thrustmaster wheel, or is that an old Logitech? It's got the shifter up on the thing. Anyway, um, man, that's all it takes. I know, I know. We're always talking about the giant eye candy. I know. I've gotten emails from people saying, thanks. Do you realize how much money you've cost me because of your reviews? Um, but I'm never going to stop preaching that the basics are really all you need. He's calling it humble beginnings. I'm calling it the base essentials. So um, there you go. Nice looking clean version of a profile cockpit rig. So this is posted on Reddit by SOF underscore M. Here we go, his first cockpit. So look at that, two newbies to the world of sim racing showing off their latest humble beginnings and my first cockpit here. And you can see he's got the Club Sport set up. Club Sport Elite Pedals, I think. I think those look like Elite Pedals. And looks like he has the Club Sport base with the inexpensive wheel rim, which... I recently put that wheel rim a little. I'll let you know get ahead of my review. I recently put the Fnatic uh, uh, cheapo wheel rim, uh, the one that has that clam shell. It's not a quick release. It's a little clamp with a bolt, and I put that on the podium wheelbase. And as soon as you do, it actually automatically puts the wheelbase into low torque mode, as though you weren't using the torque key. Uh, so it does limit the power, but. That wheel rim is kind of cool. It's the one that had the flashing uh, colored bar on the top of the rim. And now I'm looking. I think that's the one he has. Yeah, I think that's the one. Anyway, a cool setup. Nice. Not a bad first go at sim racing for that guy. And then here's another looking, nice looking setup. This is Dingo Dick. <laughs> Dingo Dick posting his 65th birthday present. Let's race. I guess that what ha what's happens when you grow up in Indy. Um, anyway, I like this setup. I think that's that track racer that's sort of an RC copy. Isn't that what that is? 
Um, no, that's an N1. Yeah, there you go. That's an N1. That's the big, incredibly beautiful and awesome R seat. I thought for some reason was confused by this thing on the back. What is this? Anybody have good eyes? Can you guys see? What is that right there? Is that a speaker tube of some sort? You can see he's got the butt kicker mount on the N1 chassis. Um, but great looking rig right there. That's not a bad 65th birthday present. You can see he's got the RC monitor stand as well. It's a monitor stand I use. So good looking stuff. And then finally, I moved this story to the end because this gets back to personal business for uh, the Simpit crew. Uh, Friday night, we did run the first race of the season in the Simpit Skippy series. And it was setting up to be so much fun for me. I was having a blast. I even got uh, had a, a, a t tiny little incident, and it put me off the track, and no big deal at all. And it put me all the way back to like 18th or 19th spot, and it was like, oh, this is going to be fun. I want to move through the field. We're going to have a good time. And then lo and behold, I lose my internet, and it just flatlined, just completely killed both streams, killed my connection to both computers into iRacing, and that was that. So I was very disappointed, but the guys went on, and I'm also making an announcement. We had a points correction. Uh, as it turns out, and uh, I, I think it was Mark Michkowski who brought it to my attention, so thank you very much for that, Mark. Uh, we are running Formula One points, which means all those people raced, all those people placed, and only 10 people scored points in the event. And I'm like, no, we're not going to – I want points paying everybody in the grid. You you started the race, you finished the race, you deserve points. So I did change us to IndyCar point system, uh, which I had to manually do, funny enough. iRacing didn't have Indy. You look at how much road racing type rate, and the only really good option they had – the only option was Formula One points, which – um, sorry, iRacing, but that seems stupid to me. Why don't you have IndyCar points or some perfect GT points for online racing? I, anyway, I went to IndyCar point structure, so I did make an adjustment. David Grunnell won the race, and he now has 50 points. Andrew Leach finished second. He now has 40. And George Sandman finished in third, and he has 35 points. Um, and everybody in the top 10, you're looking at Nico Roman, Leif Helberg, Phil Scrutton, Mark Michkowski, Sean Seabrand, da David Bring on the Pain, and Brian Ostrike all would have scored points. But now, in fact, everybody's scored all the way back to, you know, 29th place. Um, everybody in the final four position scores four. That's exa uh, five points. That's how they do it in IndyCar. That's how I have the rest of the season set up. And with our adjusted points, we are right in line for that. Um, nope, nope, Dave Blair, this was the first real race of the season. Here's our schedule. So Road Atlanta now in the books. And again, Grunnell leading the way with 50, Leach and Sandman rounding our top three this coming Friday. And today at about, what, 3, 4 o'clock is when iRacing switches. And again, there's still time to join our series. We just do it for fun. So if you, if you miss a race, it's not going to be the end of the world at all. Uh, you might not win the championship, but it's, you're still gonna have lots of fun. So check out the sh the 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 Shim Pit, uh, the Sim Pit Skippy series on iRacing, and send a, a a request to our league, and we'll get you in for this week's race. The beauty of it, again, we picked the exact same sh schedule that iRacing is using for the Skippy. So today at three o'clock, all of the iRacing servers for the Skippy series switch over to Phoenix International. Uh, it's the Phoenix International Raceway 2008 road course. So we're going back in time, back in time to Phoenix 2008 on their road course. That's where we are racing this Friday. All of the iRacing servers for practice rooms, time trials, and races have been moved to Phoenix starting today. And again, I can't remember exact time, 3 or 4 o'clock, but it means you can practice and you can get out there and race for people and get big points and be that much more ready for our race on Friday night. And those races are at 6.15 is start time, 6 o'clock qualifying. So that's going to do it for today's show. Thanks for your great comments. Thanks for being there. Be sure to do the thumbs up-y thingy and the like-y thingy and the share-y thingy and all those thingy things that help the show grow. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the show. And we'll be back on Wednesday for another edition of the Pit Stop. Hopefully we'll get a pickup in news as we get closer to the holidays. That's going to do it for today. This is the Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.